I don't have a gavel. I apologize. So we'll do the best we can. All right. We welcome everyone to this April 9th meeting of the Corsican ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting. Or it's actually a board workshop, and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budget, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management <clears throat> is a responsibility of the, of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values, and we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. All right, we have a quorum. Ms. Harrison, do we have an audience for guests? Thank you. Okay, we're going to go into our action items. Well, I guess you wonder why we asked you to be here tonight. Um, we have the honor and pleasure of recognizing two really important groups tonight. First is our teacher incentive allotment recipients, which is the large group that is here in front, as well as our teachers of the year. What we know about the teacher incentive allotment is that it was developed by the state of Texas, by the Texas Education Agency, and it was designed to provide additional funding to teachers who, learn, who earn local designations based on their effectiveness in the classroom and impact on students. Um, when you heard Dr. Brown read um, our core beliefs, these are teachers who exemplify every day for every second in their classroom, for every student, the core beliefs of Corsicana ISD. The goal is to recruit, retain, and reward effective educators, especially on high needs in rural campuses. But before we recognize these outstanding teachers, I would be remiss if I didn't also thank Dr. Karen Kopp and Mr. Sean Case, who have led this initiative. <laughs> who have led this initiative for Corsicana ISD. And I just need to add that it was really hard. It wasn't something that they just threw out there. It took days and days of planning and study and thought and meetings. Um, these are two outstanding administrators in our district who have worked tirelessly within the TEA guidelines to write the plan to ensure that it recognizes true classroom excellence, which is resulting in success for all of our students. In addition, I'd also like to recognize and thank our principals who have put in countless hours doing classroom walks, evaluations, ensuring that their perspectives are consistent, reliable, and valid from classroom to classroom and from school to school. So please join me in recognizing our outstanding principals. So tonight, we're going to recognize 50 Corsicana ISD teachers who have met and exceeded the criteria for recognition, which for this group are star and or map scores and classroom evaluations. For this group, only teachers who teach math and or English language arts and reading on a grade level that has a star or map assessment were eligible. One third of the eligible CISD teachers are receiving this designation. Next year, the criteria are expanding in eligibility and will include all teachers of academic subjects, including special education, physical education, fine arts, and electives. So to say that Dr. Kopp and Mr. Kays have their job and their work cut out for them is an understatement. TEA has not yet released the amounts that these teachers will receive. They tell us that the exact amounts will be released at the end of April. However, we anticipate that the amounts will be similar to last year. So for teachers who are recognized, it will be between $4,000 and $6,200 for five years. For exemplary, between $9,200 and $12,400, and for masters, between $17,000 and $22,700 each year for five years. Applause 
So as I call your name, please come up to the stage. Sharon Co Shannon Coke. <laughs> Caitlin Cook. <laughs> Laura Badian. <laughs> Jessica Gardner. <laughs> Lindsay Hale. <laughs> Claudia Harden. Martha Hartley, Bethany Johnson, Cynthia Johnson, Shanita Johnson, Abigail Levine, Audrey Marks, Minerva Mirafuentes, Mahaley Oliver, Brittany Putman, Trish Serna, Jamie Simons, <laughs> Betsy Thomason, <laughs> Misty Vasquez, <laughs> Melissa Anderton, <laughs> Hope Barton, <laughs> Kamisha Br Brown, <laughs> almost got it. Kamache, Angelia Campbellton, Campbell. What am I saying? I got all carried away with Kamache. Holly Cannon, Lori Cotton, Janice Fluharty, Jamie Fowler, Paula Fugate, Laura Green. Susan Griffin, Jennifer Hodge, Nicole Horn, oh, sorry. <laughs> Macy Hudson. Erica Yannick, Ayana Jones, Taylor Jones, Vanessa Juarez, Melissa Lichty, Monica McAnally, Andrea Richter, Raquel Rivera, Amelia Sorlis, Brett Sowell, Jennifer Travis, Margaret Watkins, Michelle Williams, Kelly Armstrong, Nina Ariella, Jamie Beatty, and Lisa Lamb. Congratulations to these TIA designated teachers. Just the teachers. Everybody or just the no, teachers? Just the teachers. Okay. Y'all can get in. Y'all should. I think y'all should get in. <laughs> I'll just follow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
They're all too emotional. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to, like, do we go sit down? Come on, Bradley. Come behind them. I'm right behind you. In So the next item of our agenda is recognition of the 2023-2024 Corsicana ISD Teachers of the Year. It is my honor to get to recognize these three wonderful teachers. We wanted to do something a little bit different this year because our teachers were always in such a crunch time after they were announced at the end of the year awards to get their application into Region 12. So tonight we're announcing it earlier so they'll have more time to work on that and they won't feel so much pressure toward the end of the school year. The Mark Caldwell Award recognizes an exemplary elementary teacher in Corsicana ISD. Selected by our Board of Trustees from a pool of distinguished teachers, this year one simply was not enough. Our first teacher brings energy to her classroom. She's instrumental in all the programs on her campus, not to mention she leads a helping hand to extracurricular activities after hours at a campus that's completely on the other side of Corsicana, while also leading and, leading and being an exemplary teacher in the professional development for all the teachers. The other teacher leads by example. With a servant's heart willing to step into any role needed on her campus. She's been a teacher, a behavior analyst, and managed several other duties when calls upon. 
She takes on all tasks with a positive, calm demeanor. Perhaps most notably, these two teachers see each other on a daily basis. Our co-Mark Colwell Award winners are Natasha Polk and Mackenzie Irvid from Carroll Elementary School. Please come forward and Mr. Betts will escort you up. I should also introduce a couple of the ladies to my left here. Um, our um, CEF, Executive Director Casey Gordon, and Board President Kristen Smith, and several other members of the Education Foundation Board, thank you all for being here tonight. And thank you to our Education Foundation Board for helping with the recognition of the Teachers of the Year. We appreciate you. The Golden Apple Award recognizes an outstanding secondary teacher in the district from our pool of distinguished teachers. This teacher has been an asset both in the classroom and with extracurricular activities for almost three decades now. Her class is challenging and her ability to share and collaborate with her teammates is invaluable. Her actions move mountains, inspire her students, and inspire her colleagues. Our Golden Apple Award winner is Elizabeth Talley, Corsicana High School. <laughs> Mr. Doring. This is an incredible evening, and it is just the best of times when you get to recognize the outstanding teachers in our district. So please join me one more time in acknowledging and thanking our TIA teachers and our Teachers of the Year.
Teachers and family, the library is set up with cookies and refreshments, and there's an opportunity to take pictures so you guys can be dismissed to the library, okay? We'll wait. We'll let them get out, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have a meeting to, con meeting to conduct, so if y'all want to exit toward the library, you can catch up there. Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. All right, now we're going to move into the Collins Scholarship Report. I sure am glad Raymond excused everybody because the only thing that would make people move faster than free refreshments and snacks is a boring banker. So thank you for that, Raymond. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Frost and trustees for having me. Uh, it's always good to come present, especially after all of the good news you've already provided. So uh, it's much better than following budget talks and things like that. And so hopefully... I'll have some good news for you, and uh, so if you'll jump into the uh, report on page one, this is the uh, asset allocation for the Collins Scholarship Fund. Uh, that money market's an equivalent there uh, is 1.27. That's is, This report is as of March 31st. That is m essentially the cash that you have readily available for scholarships, and so you can see over the years that number continues to continues to climb even when you're trying to chip away at it. Uh, happy to report today that number is just below 1.3 million, so it continues to climb. Uh, ta your taxable bond portfolio in the Collins Scholarship is at about 8.2 million, which is about 40, a little over 40% of your account. And the stock position is about 53%, uh, most of that being in U.S. equities. And so if you, flip, if you see at the bottom there the total portfolio uh, market value, we ended the month at $20.2 million. That was the first time we've ended a month over $20 million since December of 2021. And so what's been good is not only have you had a really strong stock market of late, but with the oil and gas market, dividends and interest, especially with interest rates, you're now earning about $250,000 more than you were at that, at that period in December of 21. And so that's just more scholarships to uh, address. And so hopefully we'll get to that here shortly. Uh, if you flip over to page three, this is the, uh, the returns for the Collins account. If you see, this is for the three months. So basically the first quarter of 24, 
the uh, towards the middle of the page at the bottom, the total portfolio had a return of 5.55 percent versus the benchmark of 4.61. As I mentioned, the uh, stock market has was really strong last year, and that's really continued on into the first quarter of 24. Uh, not sure how, how much higher it can continue to climb, but there's a lot of uh, potential obstacles as we go forward this year. But one thing that's really helped in addition to, to the growth with Collins is interest rate environment. Uh, the Fed started their policy in, in 2022, and I can hear a lot of yawning now, and you start talking about interest rates. But as the Fed has continued to hike rates, uh, it looks like the interest rate environment is going to be favorable for the fund for the foreseeable future. And so as we have things, especially things that were purchased during the pandemic when interest rates were so low, as those items roll in and mature, you're reinvesting at much higher rates. And that's what's really helped the income continue to climb. Uh, if you look at page four, this is more of a longer term outlook. If you look, I mentioned the quarter, the last six months, uh, the return has been 13.5% versus the benchmark of 14.02. The last 12 months, 14.06 versus a 14 and a half. The last three years, 4.8 versus 3.73. And so these are all annualized uh, average numbers. Looking over, to, if you'll flip to page nine, this is this this report here is a little more in depth than the other return when we're looking about talking about benchmarks. Is this is the more accurate barometer on our ability to pick? stocks versus their peers. And so if you look fiscal year to date, we're at a 5.55 and that benchmark is a 449. The last 12 months, 14.06 versus a 13.25% return. And so really what's driven a lot of that is as information technologies, but really as of late, especially the last six months, it's been more spread out. And so it's, that's a sign of a healthy stock market and we're hoping that is a trend that will continue. Really flipping over uh, the last page of your report, and, and again, I can take questions at any time. This last page is a, a letter I typically will send to, to Dr. Frost every six months to try to give you an outlook on the uh, income that the, the, not only does the fund have, but also what we're projecting. And so that top part there, uh, looking from March through August of this year, we're projecting the income for the account to be about three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and that's uh, that's a that's a subject of interest rates being uh, being higher, but also the oil and gas market. Uh, the last few months, we've seen oil prices continue to rise. Anytime that does, that is uh, not good for us as consumers, but good for us from the scholarship standpoint. And looking at the next fiscal year. We are forecasting the income for, for the Collins Scholarship to be about $725,000. And so when you factor that in, you've got about $1.29 million currently in, in income cash that's available for scholarships. You are in really good shape, as I know you guys are starting to budget and, and come up with that selection process. You're in good shape to match last year's or exceed it. Are there any questions? Yeah, Jared. So if we decide this year to be a little bit more conservative, could we take that cash and reinvest it? Yes, we can. The only reason we haven't is right now our money market fund is, is really loosely tied to the Fed funds rate. And so right now it's earning about 5.2% and it pays monthly interest. And so right now there's really not any incentive to do that. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, six months into the future, if interest rates start to fall, then that's certainly something we can reconsider. But for right now, uh, I think you just stick with what we're doing currently, because you'll earn more. Earn more. Thank you. Jared, I wanted to say, um, since I'm, you know, going off the board, <coughs> I just want to say that um, I really appreciate, you know, your organization for making sure that you know, the Collins Scholarship stays intact and that y'all invest the money, you know, right, so that we can continue giving out scholarships. I know some some years, you know, in, in the past, it's been, you know, depending on what's going on, but thank you so much for um, just being um, 
you know, being wise and just, you know, taking into consideration the history of the scholarship, you know, and I know that it'll last, you know, years to come. Thank, thank you, Barbara. Hopefully my green key is they'll be able to get it, one. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting for us when you, when you make your announcement. I know last year we were really excited when you had made the announcement that you're giving out more than I can recall you giving in quite some time. And uh, it, it's always something, you know, we growing up and graduating from Corsicana, it's, it's something that a lot of families and students don't really know how, how important this scholarship is and how there are much bigger school districts that do not have anything like this. And so it's, it's encouraging to see. We hope it continues to grow and generate more income and that you can continue giving out more and more scholarships. Does anyone else have any questions for Jared? Thank you very much for coming by. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are going to go into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code 551.01.